the Swifties and the K-pop fans, right? Oh, yeah. They will if bring you down. they joined forces. <laughs> no question. So fabulous to see you. Fabulous to see you in Riverside as we are. Doesn't Alonzo look shiny and bright today? Like more so than usual. <laughs> thanks to his Christmas tree is up in the, in the, I mean, I thought you'd have it up like pre Thanksgiving. You know, look, Dave's, uh, Dave's been hobbling around with like hip issues. I'm now hobbling around. We have matching canes. It's very exciting because so I have cute. a bone spur in my foot, which means, I guess means I don't have to go to Vietnam. Anyway, so it, it, everything <laughs> got delayed, but the Christmas tree is now up. Everybody relax. The tree is up so we can all see it in 1080p. And if you would also like to connect with folks through YouTube or social media, or you've got a podcast, or you wanted to say hi to folks across the country in Riverside, we've got a link for you down below breakfast 15 is your code please enjoy uh yes news we have news oh also and subscribing have you subscribed <laughs> could you please find the christmas spirit in your heart tick 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 we're so close you guys we have scant weeks until the end of the year and we're very very close to twenty thousand. and we would love to have you come along for all of the award season and the holiday movies if you have not subscribed already so news um wakanda forever just keeps dominating the box office yep. and we had violent night come out you know this past week and it did okay it, it made 13.3 million dollars at the box office which is not really great um it will how probably much did hang it, on but how much did it cost right i mean a buck 50 <laughs> and that's all just david harbour's beard so it's uh it'll be fine and it's the kind of movie that i think will hang on throughout christmas because there's not really anything else like it but we'll kind of forever for the fourth week in a row is number one but notably glass onion was not around this week and right and even like the dude in charge of Netflix was saying, we should have left Glass Onion in theaters longer. <laughs> it's like, you think? Well, you know, look, it's not their model. You know, they don't, mm -hmm. uh, Netflix, I, I think they think of whatever they get theatrically is just sort of gravy, you know. And so I think maybe they'll learn from this one that they have these movies that will be sort of hybrids that they can get two, three weeks in theaters out of, really rev up public interest and then make a bigger splash when they start streaming. But th I think this was just kind of a, we're trying to make peace with AMC and, and Regal and, and kind of generate word of mouth buzz. But really for them, are people subscribing to Netflix is what their real bottom line is, not how many tickets did we sell. Yes, that is more important. And Netflix will have Glass Onion streaming starting December 23rd. And then sometime after the first of the year, we'll do a little live yes. spoiler discussion with you guys. We want to hear your thoughts. Were you shocked by all the twists? But we wouldn't dream of giving any of it away beforehand. No. So stick around for that. We'll have more information about that for you very, very soon. We had a first look at Bong Jun Ho's Mickey 17, which is interesting. They, they teased it with a YouTube short. So it's like a vertical little YouTube short. It's only a minute long, and it's this thing of Robert Pattinson and what looks like some kind of cryo chamber. Um, so Robert Pattinson starring with, with Bong Joon-ho and um, an interesting cast. It's Steven Yoon and a bunch of other folks, and they've uh, – Robert Pattinson, shirtless. March of 2024. Mark your calendars. Isn't it interesting, yeah, that they're already planning that far out in advance, but, I mean – but people like this, like, why not get the hype machine going? Uh, sure, yeah. What's kind of <laughs> what's surprising about a March opening date is that there won't be a can launch. I guess probably they're looking at Sundance for that year, but I don't know. Or are they going to like try to get hype for it at the Oscars, which would be right before then, right? Uh, yeah, in terms of like advertising and stuff. Yeah. But I think like I would think after Parasite, like you know, was sort of began at the Cannes Film Festival and sort of mm -hmm. grew out from there. He seems like the kind of director who would make it a point to like, like if he were opening his movie in late May, I would get it. But March, it's like, okay, well, that's, I, I guess we're doing something different here. Indeed. And that's clear from the way they marketed this already. Because sure. like a YouTube short as your first teaser, that's kind of cool. Taylor Swift fans are suing Ticketmaster over the fiasco of trying to get tickets to her era's tour and it just like being paralyzed. Good. <laughs> uh, Ticketmaster is a nightmare and has been I mean we used to make fun of Ticketmaster when I was in college in ye old 80s like they've been <laughs> a nightmare company for a very long time and like they gouge 
you know, venues, they gouge the consumer, they gouge bands. And yeah, I I'm surprised the Department of Justice hasn't cracked down on them ages ago, especially after they basically formed a monopoly with Live Nation. Like, yeah, this is not tenable. Yeah, I think if anyone could possibly shake this up, it is. Yeah, the do Swifties. not mess with the Swifties. <laughs> the, the Swifties and the K-pop fans, right? Oh, yeah, they will if bring you down. they've joined forces. <laughs> no question. So there's going to be this six-part Netflix documentary series about Harry and Meghan, titled appropriately Harry and Meghan. They are putting out the first three episodes on December 8th, and then the second three episodes, volume two, they're calling it, on December 15th. And this is, you know, they have a production deal with Netflix like right. the Obamas do. Mm -hmm. And so I suspect this is going to be kind of like the Michelle Obama documentary mm. Becoming, which was very intimate, but not exactly a warts and all look at, you know, <laughs> the subject matter when, when they're providing so much intimate access and so much input creatively. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, Harry and Meghan by Harry and Meghan. So, you know, it'll, uh, I think they, let's not kid ourselves. Like that is exactly what the thing is going to be. And, and I, the one prediction I will make is that, uh, what's his face will hate it. Um, Oh, Piers Who's Morgan. Piers Morgan. Thank you. I couldn't remember his name. Yeah, that loser. We need to find him a hobby because his obsession with <laughs> Meghan Markle is really unhealthy. It's creepy. The guy who shot Lady Gaga's dog walker mm -hmm. and stole her Frenchies yes. has been sentenced to 21 years in prison. Again, supposedly he didn't know these were Lady Gaga's Frenchies. He and his <laughs> posse of dog nappers were just trolling the streets of Los Angeles looking for these very expensive dogs. And, and I would venture to say it shouldn't make a difference. So you didn't know they were Lady Gaga's Frenchies for you shoot someone and steal their dogs. Just, you know, I don't know that that makes it better right. or worse. It made it a more high profile case, though. Well, like, yeah, know, for other, sure. Other random Frenchie nappers wouldn't be in True. variety. TMZ would not be attending his <laughs> trial. Uh, we have uh, several people to talk about, people and animals to talk about who have died. Mm. Kirstie Alley died at 71. Yes, yes. Let's talk about Kirstie Alley for a sec. Oh. This is one of those, can you separate the artist from the art? <laughs> yeah, that's a complicated <laughs> legacy because as a film uh, actress and sitcom star, I mean, she was she was funny and she was sexy and she uh, brought a lot to a, a variety of roles, whether she was a, a Vulcan in uh, Star Trek IV or, you know, uh, doing like the Look Who's Talking movies, Cheers, of course, Veronica's Closet, but, but. also like a big Trumpy anti-vaxxer or, you know, things. So it's like, oh, lady. A couple things. Wasn't she in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan? Maybe. I don't know my Star Trek. Maybe I'm, I'm getting her confused with Jane Weedland. I, I forget. I don't either, but she's definitely, it was like her first film Maybe it was two. Because okay. she came out to two. LA Sorry, yes. from Kansas to study Scientology and she was an interior uh, designer and she became an actress and that was her first big you film can role. You can spot her on some old uh, game shows, actually. Yes. She was a contestant on like Password Plus, I think, and maybe Match yes. Game. Yeah, you know. she was on Password. Um, so that is that. But she's been a Scientologist since like the late seventies, like this, which why she came out here and then happened to do look who's talking with John Travolta. Um, and then there's you know, more recently been, you know, scandalous stuff with like, is her grandson being held in the clutches of Scientology and, you know, oh, I didn't know that stuff. Oh. There's that. But then also the thing with Trump, I guess she, she tweeted support for him in 2016 and then like doubled back and said, no, I support nobody because it's all terrible. But she was an anti-vaxxer. Anyway, yeah. a complicated legacy, but she had to step into yes. Shelley Long's <laughs> shoes, which was tough on Cheers. Yes. Bob from Sesame Street died. That one gets me because you like him yeah well i you know look i am the of the age where like the og sesame street was my you know had a big influence on me as a kid like i went into preschool knowing how to read because of sesame street mm -hmm. and so yeah like you know the 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 original Gordon, who is the father of Holly Robinson Pete, mm -hmm. I learned in uh, one of the Sesame Street documentaries that came out. And mm -hmm. she actually had some very lovely tweets about Bob's passing and about the, the you know, I think Susan is the only one left of the original crew. Oh. You know, Maria died and Mr. Hooper and, you know, a lot of, a lot of the other performers. Um, but, yeah, and he was he was with the show for a very long time. He was 90. Yeah. Bob McGrath. One thing I learned from his obit in the New York Times was that he was this unlikely heartthrob. Mm. Heartthrob crooner in the 50s and 60s. No and that's, kidding. That, that his, his origin was as, as a singer. Wow. And that's how he got into Sesame Street. I guess a fraternity brother of his like <laughs> mentioned, hey, there's this thing. 
<laughs> audition you might check out. And then Noodle the Pug. Do walk you know me who through Noodle this. is? Please walk me through this because I do not know. Okay, Noodle became a TikTok famous pug. He was a okay. senior rescue pug. And his dad, Jonathan, did this thing with him where he would stand him up in his little doggy bed. And if Noodle flopped over... It was a no bones day. If you stood oh. up and was like excited to be there and ready for the day, it was a bones day. I know and Noodle from We Rate Dogs. Yes, yes, yes. 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 And okay. so um, he was on Instagram and like in the last year became a superstar and was a subject of a children's book, Noodle and the <laughs> No Bones Day, where it taught kids like if you're just not feeling well, if you're feeling down, it's okay to feel that way. Self-care is okay. And, uh, but he just had the sweetest little face and he and, and his dad, Jonathan had this really great kind of, you know, rapport back and forth, really cute videos and just something you look forward to every day. It's a really, really sweet doggy. So RIP noodle, mm. you brought joy to millions and uh, hopefully it's a no bones day every day in heaven for you. Amen. Also, we forgot to mention last time, Clarence Gilliard Jr. Yes. from uh, Walker, Texas Ranger and who uttered the the immortal line, the quarterback is toast in Die Hard uh, and was also was teaching in Texas for quite a while. Like he was a professor of, I, I, I believe, in the drama department at I'm now forgetting what university also recently passed away. So R.I.P., sir.